to What's What with Benji Watch. Welcome to the Halloween special edition with, <laughs> with our special guest at this time, Craig Thompson. You're skinny? No, that's right. Um, <laughs> Craig Thompson wasn't able to be here today. He was going to be our guest, but um, because his daughter was um, broke her wrist, uh, he couldn't be here. So, <gasps> oh, they came out of nowhere. That's right. With our special guest today is actually producer Josh. Yay! Hey, <laughs> how's it going, Benji? Fantastic. It's good to actually have a spare person. Um, where's, where's your blazer? Well, I, I was going. Well, you going with a casual look today? No, 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 no. Oh. This is my Halloween costume. What's the? I'm a straight man. Wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I was trying to. I was wondering what kind of like you know villain you dressed up as. No, no, no. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm a villain. I'm a straight man. Wrong, <laughs> wrong, got it, got wrong, it. Yeah, true, wrong. true. Uh, and you're dressed up as um a uh, gay guy in a closet. So. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. There you go. Um. Oh. But boom, boom. Yeah. Hey, yeah. no. We've got sound. Uh, we've got sound effects later. Yeah. Uh, also got the. You know, we went quite all out this time. We got the cauldron with a. Uh, you know, candy, nice. pumpkins, um, because it's very American. It looks, it looks really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> pumpkins, pumpkins everywhere, and yeah, the usual stuff. Um, all right, so we, we, sh we should talk about Craig Thompson since he, since he was about, you know, going to be here, you know. Yeah, he's uh, the longest, New Zealand's longest r promoter. Yes, he's been promoting for 13 years, um, wow. and uh, f his professional um, fights. Oh, um, that he promoted. He's had 49 events. Wow. Okay. It's more than... Um, I think it's like combining Bruce Glossier and um, Duco events merged into one. Wow, that's cool. And he's also a fighter, so he sometimes yeah. fights on his shows. Uh, yeah. 11 professional wins as a professional boxer. Mm -hmm. And he's match made 103 events. Okay, he's he's played a significant role in your career, right? What in my career? Right. <laughs> well, yeah, he, he is actually. He's um, because I started doing box rec around November 2014. I met him around that time, and then he introduced me to like the judging, and went off from there, you know. Yeah, and we've lived happily happily ever after. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. he's also introduced uh, Isaac to M Singh, so Isaac Savage. Yeah, yeah, Isaac Savage, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. bad rap. And, yeah, he uh, gave me my break to record like. Um, Robert Berridge versus Adrian Zahir. So it all started from, from Craig. So he's, Yeah, and, yeah. you know, the, the legendary first video of, you know, pushing each other. That's you know, right, yeah. that's right. You know, uh, and, um, yeah, he's... So it's uh, unfortunately can't be, huh? And also not just that, he's um, promoted two boxers who became world champions. So that's Danielle Smith. Um, oh, IBF. Yep. And obviously Giovanna Perez in uh, late December last year. Wow. So, you know, he's... You know, he's a serious um, promoter. Yeah. yeah. And also he's um, promoted people like um, Michelle Preston, who went on to win the WBC Muay Thai world title. Um, Dettiana Lupi, um, who won the WIBA world title and a Muay Thai world title. And Robert Berridge at one point as well, obviously, um, who fought for a world title as well. So, yeah. yeah, just bring the mic a little closer to you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. So he'll be here on the next episode, right, Benji? Uh, next Let's episode, see. or um, you know, which is uh, again another thing. Sad news. You're going away, you prick. That's right. That's right. My uh, brother's getting married, so. Uh, well, he's gonna be trapped forever. <laughs> um, yeah. So because of that, uh, we might do one on Thursday. But apart from that, we'll have a couple of weeks break. From what's what with Benji, with mm -hmm. Benji, obviously. Um, That's right. <laughs> do you like the nickname or is it a little bit too much? <laughs> what kind of feedback have you got on the sound effects? Anything? Or? Oh, well, we've got an Australian that said that they, it's just too much. Yeah. So and like, no. I'm perfect. And I'm like, perfect. You know? Yeah. We're, we're trying to get away from the Australians. Exactly. Oh, no. yeah. You know, another side side comment. You know, last week we made the joke about how Sky City is burning down and everything was burning down. You know how true that's become? Like, we've had fires everywhere. Like, there was a fire on the ferry. There was a fire in Mount Wellington. There was a fire in Waihi. You know, big, massive <laughs> fires because, like, we, we we said that one thing that the whole place was burning down. Yeah, that's that's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure there's arson like just going around, you know, you know, just burning places all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, it's a bit of a shame that South Africa won the Rugby World Cup. Yeah, no. who, and, who, and it's quite a dominant win as well. Who did you want to win? I wanted the All Blacks to win. <laughs> uh, and then <laughs> next I wanted England to win. The funny thing is, is that 
I didn't want Obex to win this last one. How do you say that? Like, How can I you say should at least that? pretend not to say it. Like, at least pretend. No. Well, as I said last week uh, with Kendall, is, is that um, All Blacks winning for such a long time, it yeah. made the sport boring. How Kind of how Klitschko was winning, was world champion for like 10, 10 years. And a lot of people said that heavyweight division was boring. And then the All Blacks lost and Klitschko lost. It made the sport very interesting again. I don't think so. I, I didn't. I couldn't stand. You know how many penalties were scored in the game? It I wasn't know. an exciting game. I know. I but wanted to see the All Blacks. Throughout the whole Rugby World Cup, I wanted Ireland to win. And then Ireland lost the Who did they lose to? Uh, to All Blacks. Oh, and then I wanted Japan to win. But the Japan lost. What did they lose to? They, they lost to South Africa. Okay. And then I wanted New Zealand to win because of all the English um, um, anti haka joke um, comments. Yeah, yeah. And then New, uh, New Zealand lost. What was the whole controversy with the haka? Like, I saw it. I didn't see anything. They, they wanted, um, they think, uh, having the haka. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think um, the haka, they want haka to be removed because it's an unfair advantage or something like that. Like the mind games? Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, I wanted Wales to win, and then they lost <laughs> against South Africa. Okay. And then, like, I wanted England because like, they, I wanted, like, a new, another new, you know, winner. And then, like, they lost again. So I was like, oh, six. Okay, I got to bleep all these. All, man, Benji can't. Go, dirty mouth, potty mouth. <laughs> all right, right come on. Uh, back to boxing so uh, what we we're going to talk about was the auckland eight dare to be great in auckland we've got the heavyweight um eight man heavyweight tournament against uh, the eight professionals i'm not going to mention all of them but the winner of this i think gets like i don't know, I don't know how much money they get if they win it but they get uh, the pro box pacific heavyweight title that's vacant and um i guess it's time to mention some of the boxes that are going to be in this um in this tournament didn't craig do this before with the um, middleweight the middleweight yeah and yes. tej singh won that right yeah so tej singh won that fight uh against jerome pascua in the finals mm -hmm. and that was a pretty good one yeah it was um, an entertaining, entertaining show as well yeah, yeah it was um he won i believe it was actually my idea to just bring these uh tournaments back because we haven't had a tournament since the super eight series mm -hmm. and the super eight series was great at the beginning, but then it turned into one of those things. It's like, oh, these these cruiserweight fighters came coming in again. Oh, same <laughs> different night kind of thing. It's like, oh, this is boring. But Craig Thompson bringing this back, it became quite an entertaining thing. Everyone like, like a lot of people like the um, eight man tournaments. Um, they do it in Australia all the time. They love it over there. Um, there's like the World Series for um, the Muhammad Ali, um, you know, Muhammad Ali Trophy. And like, it's, it's a very exciting thing to do. Ted was really dominant. Ah! Like he came out of nowhere. Well, and he, he, was, he even beat up uh, Kerry. Yeah, Kerry, yeah. Kerry, da Kerry well, Davis. Kerry yeah. Davis. He did a very good job in that first round because he he was like he moved around for that first round and just tried to outpunch Ted, which he can't really do. Um, but he did a very good job considering um, going against someone that's in the top, you know, fifty in the world at the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but. Um, Craig Thompson um, tried to get a women's a, a woman tournament happening, but couldn't get enough women to do it. A heavyweight division, and the win the winner of that was going to be a world title mandatory challenge. But the problem is, is that it's a logistical nightmare trying to get these sorts of fights happening because everyone keeps on pulling out. <gasps> you know, the pull out method it's never effective. You know. <laughs> <laughs> So that was supposed to be in October, though, right? The, um, the women's one. Yeah. yeah, it was supposed to be say, October, uh, October or December. -ish. Women's heavyweight. Yeah. Okay. But that that ended up being scrapped, and now we've who got were the, some of the contenders on that one? I think Ari Melcia. I think Lani. Lani's sister, right? Lani no, Dan Caroline. Caroline. Yeah, Caroline yeah. Daniels was going to be on there, and a couple of debutants as well. But yeah. yeah. Uh, but for this eight man, I'll just mention a couple of them because we've got Junior Party. Who we all know, Junior Putty, he's a uh, quite quite. He's trying to be like the David Tour, but you know. <laughs> yeah, he, he he's coming off his fight with uh, Lucas, Lucas Brown. Brown. He hasn't yeah. fought for a while. The thing with um, Junior Putty, he's got the skills and the factors, but he just doesn't know how to use them. In my personal opinion, mm -hmm. um, for someone for him, he needs to fight regular, uh, quite regular. But he's at this point of his career where he's only fighting like a couple of times a year, or even once a year, um, may mainly because he's probably like getting too old or something like that but i want to see him more regular i want to see him more su uh, more successful but you don't really see that with him mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, another person we've got Will Quarry making his return. Uh, nice. we, have, we haven't seen him since uh, on the Joseph Parker undercard against Izu. So and that's the last time he's fought. Yeah, okay. and that's like what we call the knockout of the century, you could yeah. say. Um, Clarence Tillman, we haven't seen him since the fight against um, David Latelli, who's with Brown Butterbean. Okay, did he? He won that. Did he? No, uh, Brown Butterbean won. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Did which, he? Did he get put down though? Brown Butterbean. Yeah. Yeah, he got put That's down in the right. first round, That's and right. yeah. Uh, Thomas Powtow, Powtow, uh, very bad pronunciation. Um, um, he's he's living in Australia at the moment. He's well known more as a kickboxer, but uh, he's um, making his return to the ring because he hasn't fought in New Zealand for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And we've got Samesi Kalu, who uh, we know uh, defeated Cameron Tukoa, um, who drawed with Cameron, oh, what's that? <laughs> Cameron, <laughs> with, um, what's his name, Conrad Lamb. He drew with Conrad, and he competed at the uh, Commonwealth Games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a pretty um, that was a pretty good yeah. match, right, with Conrad Lamb, like um, the way he operated? Yeah, well, yeah. he um, has had sumo training, so he was able to use, like when Conrad got too close, just kind of twist him around, using his own weight against him kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, from like what you know, who do you think is going to win the Super 8? So, I think oh. you've just covered five people, right? Yeah. I mean, it's Super 8, right? Where's the other... So, the other three, I don't know very much. I don't know well enough. Uh, I f- f- forgot their names, in fact. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, they're all debuting boxers. Mm-hmm. But out of those five, who do you, who do you think would win out of those well, five? Well, the most active, I think, has been Semi C. Kalu. Yeah. Uh, did I pronounce that right? It's uh, Messi Carlo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think he's been um, the most very, active. very active, and plus he's had some good, good, good levels of good fighters. Yeah. He's, he's fought some good f- opposition. Plus he's from Pride Lands, and they, yeah. you know, they produce good fighters. Uh, Will Quarry, he's got the length, he's got the reach. Yeah, uh, he's tall, he's he's strong, he's durable. But the only thing is, it might be a bit rusty. Yeah. So well, let's. I see. think yeah. majority of them will be quite rusty. Yeah, but I think Will Quarry is always training, right? Yeah. Like he's always in the gym. Uh, Tillman. He will put on a good show, but once again, yeah, it's just, it's just the rust factor. Oh, imagine Junior Putty versus Clarence Tillman. Because I, re- I remember they used to, like, um, they had a, like, a fight booked at one point, but Clarence Tillman um, left halfway through the show because apparently his pregnant girlfriend got sick, but did not pr- produce any evidence that she suggested that. Wow. So um, what a lot of people think is, is that Clarence Tillman did a runner. Who was promoting that show? That was Mel Siossi. Okay, so maybe there's some bad blood from that. You know? Oh yeah, there'll be bad blood. You know? Okay, so who do you think is gonna win? I, I'm going. F- it's either Patty or Samesi Kalu, but I think Samesi Kalu's got the winning factor there. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So uh, let's see how that plays out. But 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 once again, Will Quarry is taller than what both of them, eh? Samesi and I think so. Yeah, and Junior Party, so yeah. that could be interesting. But. The good thing about this event is, is that it's not the only thing that's on this event. We've got um, Evander Tear is on the card. Wow! But also the um, real de- no. What's his What's his nickname? Uh, okay, no. uh, I no can't problem. remember. But another thing is, is that Ari Malasia versus Ashley Campbell wow. for the New Zealand title. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So um, we'll talk about Auri later, but like first we'll talk about Ashley because um, Ashley, she's been, always been the one that's um, just been the person that comes in just for the fight and gets the payday. Um, mostly she's been used to, you know, t- come in and be the losing boxer. Uh, you know how like Daniel Maxwell is or Nick, Nick Haikara is. And, and, you know, she's fought Caroline Daniels, lost by split decision, then fought... Um, Sarah Long and lost um, that New Zealand title. And then she went on to fight um, Diane Besley and defeated her twice. And if you don't know who Diane Besley is, I think she's won two amateur New Zealand titles. Mm-hmm. So she, um, even though it was 10 years after Diane um, hasn't fought for a while, this, that's still a good defeat for Ashley. Yeah, so she's sort of making a resurgence. Like she's... Um... Yeah. This developing new skills. Maybe she's training with uh, with Cairo at yeah, uh, yeah. Hit Fitness. So um, well, Hit Fitness is like with Cairo. You've got um, David Nikea, Nika, I should say David mm-hmm. Nika, Di- David Nike, <laughs> Nike. Yeah, Nike, Nike could uh, advertise uh, them. But I think he's with, he's with Adidas. Eh? 
Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay, that's massive. Sponsored by Nike. Yeah. <laughs> Adidas. Um, so she's got a good support system, like, you know. And as for Ari Melcia, she's been trained out of Vasco. But um, she's already been a New Zealand champion. She's a UBF Asia Pacific champion. And she reached fifth in the world in WBA and fourth in box rec. Mm. And she's beaten like top females there, like Nailini? No. So she beat Nailini, who yep. was top 10 in the world at the time. There you go. On her first fight. There you go. Oh, wow. On her first fight. Yeah, so she's really got the skill. Yeah. yeah. And then she went on to fight, um, fight Kirsty, um, the Simon sniper, mm-hmm. who was. Uh, also 10th in the world and like defeated her as well mm-hmm. and like uh, uh, beat Sarah Long once yes yeah and then and there was a contentious um, yeah, yeah. rematch yeah and yeah. then there was the recent rematch where they ended in a draw mm-hmm. so um, this is a good um, either girl this would actually put them up so know. was this one of the fights that was gonna be on the the 8th the woman's 8th no this is this is actually gonna happen no, but was it scheduled originally for maybe the woman's eight? Like that was possibly to... okay. well because they both were going to be in the women's eight. Oh, okay, okay, got it. That's but I mean. um, you know, this is going to happen instead of for woman, uh, for a New Zealand title. Got um, it's good. That's um, a, that's a pretty good good one. It's a good show. I've seen them. I've seen them fight on in uh, in Cambridge. Yeah, yeah. I've I seen think. Ashley Campbell fight twice there. I think. Yeah. yeah. So the good thing is, is that if Ari wins, she she can go fight Sarah Long again. If she beats Sarah Long, then she can be um, she would be uh, in contendership for a world title with Giovanna Perez. <laughs> I'll say it for you. <laughs> um, well, could be because she she does she does want to go down and wait. Is uh, that a possibility? Though? Like, is it, that it is a possibility, but she, like a distant possibility. Or? Just, well, I wouldn't say too distant because she just needs those two wins. Then she can file uh, file the right paperwork with Dobio, and then she will become a mand- mandatory challenge. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Ashley Campbell, uh, she would sh- she still needs like at least three wins, even if she like uh, f- defeated Aori and then defeated Stero. She would need like at least one more win on top of that, um, mainly because she's already lost to you know a couple of people anyway. So, hmm. so yeah, um, has um, has uh, Ali. Uh, is that right? Uh, the name is always I can't pronounce it. Eh? What is it? Uh, Ali. Al- Ari. Ari. Yeah. yeah. Has she ever fought uh, Giovanna? No. They sparred together though. How did that go? I don't know. <laughs> okay. But they, they sparred together, so um, you know, a future fight possibly. If um, anyone has the footage, send it over. <laughs> no. Um. That that'd be um, <clears throat> if Ari defeats Ashley and then defeats Sarah, then. That would be a good fight to see after that. But okay. she needs to earn it. Yeah. Got it, got it. Okay. And so still away. Still, I could say that that could fight could happen in 2021. If she... I mean, that's only two fights, right? So why can't that happen in 2020? Well, because, like, um, Giovanna, she still needs to... Um, she needs to, you know, fight next in March. I'm assuming March or April, sometime like that. We don't know. Because but she's we, aiming for more international opponents, Yeah, right? she's wa- aiming for more okay. international opponents. And that's why um, Aori needs to, like, you know, earn the spot there mm. to um, to earn the right to be the challenger for Giovanna. So. But I'm pretty sure, I mean, she could put up a better fight than Claire Hafner. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, though. Um, that Aori versus Claire Hafner, that could be a good match. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that could be interesting, yeah. And if, like, the Giovanna thing doesn't happen, there's other titles. There's the IBF title, there's the WBO, there's the Cruiserweight title or Heavyweight title. And you've gone through this list in uh, episode two. Have I? <laughs> yes, yes, I have. You were mentioning uh, different possibilities yeah, for Giovanna. Yeah. There's so go diff- check that out. Yeah, there are diff- uh, different possibilities for It's both. a good breakdown, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, um, let's go to the next um, uh, fight night. Um, next topic is the... Next Shane Cameron fight night that's happening on the November 29th at no- North Shore Event Centre. Well, actually, no, it's called Event, Event Finder Stadium now, isn't it? Oh, wow. Good. I don't know that. You, you know, everyone you know, keeps yeah. on changing their names, you know. Um, you know, Vector, like- Sp- Vodafone, Spark Arena. <laughs> yeah. Same person. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, this is actually going to be an interesting fight night. This is another thing that we could talk to Craig. Craig, skinny thing, you. Uh, <laughs> Why is he in, is he involved in the matchmaking? So yeah, he's involved in most of Shane Cameron's matchmakings actually. So oh, really, okay. Yeah, so most of like this is a good thing with Craig Thompson is is that he's a good person to have around because when shit hits the fan, Craig is the one that picks up the pieces and like fixes things almost. So, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like if like you have 
a great card and half of them pull out so it's like okay Craig here you go I could find just someone that they, you know I'll put shit over there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Literally picking up shit and putting it back into where it's supposed to go. So, yeah. He's the fixer. He's the fixer. But, um, <clears throat> we've already got some good fights that's booked. But one really yeah. good one. You, you, yeah. I'll, I'll say the uh, Marcus Hayward versus Shea Brock. Yeah, that's. I'm excited about that. Yeah, I'm excited for the return as well. Like the, the return. Shea Brock, we haven't seen him since he fought Brian Morgan. Yeah. Um,. That was probably the fight of the year for what year was that actually? 2017 was yeah. it? Yeah, fight of the year for 2017. He's got a hell of a chin. A hell of a chin. Man. And um, Marcus, he's a tough bugger. <laughs> yeah. He fought um, Gunnar Jackson and went the full five rounds. We've seen him fight like, a couple of opponents since then, like Jesse. Jesse um, what's his last name? Uh, Nikora? Nikora, yeah, Jesse yeah. Nikora. Um, he beat yeah. Skull, bro. I think uh, he's fought him twice. He's fought Scope in the corporate. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, and he's he's also a, a kickboxer as well, Marcus. Mm-hmm. And now transferring back, um, going into boxing and fighting Shea Brock, making a big, massive uh, return um, after early retirement, in my opinion. Yeah. So it's going to be a hell of a fight. And that guy's ripped, right, Marcus? Oh, well, yeah. both boxers. You can throw a pee at their chest and it'll bounce off. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm keen to see how how Shea looks after after you know a couple of years off. You yeah, know. <clears throat> you know, I still think Shea can go all the way with the right management and right trainers. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like um, he's very tight with um, Henry Schusner. Yeah, yeah. But imagine if he was like trained uh, under like City Kickboxing. Mm-hmm. That would yeah. be like uh, I think that would bring out Shea a lot more. Definitely, like, he's got the heart of a champion. Like he's, I I, I really rate that. I, I think he's a really top one of the top fighters in New Zealand. Yeah. yeah, it's like the whole um, how Junior Far was under Harry Sh- 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 <laughs> Schultz the Sh- Sh- yeah, yeah. Um, for a long time, but Junior uh, felt um, that he could only learn so much from one trainer, so he moved on. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, and that evolved Junior for um, obviously, and it was a good thing for him for, for the better. So mm-hmm. imagine if that happened to Shay Brock as well. True. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've got uh, Kiki Todd Latali fighting Hunter Sam. Wow. Okay. So Hunter Sam, uh, we know he gave Junior Far a lot of problems. Well, let's actually even, we can look before that where Hunter Sam actually gave Kali Meehan a bunch of problems in the Super 8 back in 2000 and... <laughs> yeah, 2000. You, can't, you can't sleep on him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 2012, was it? I don't know. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll do a little, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The blue thing. It's right here. The blue thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Too lazy. <laughs> no, um, he, and a lot of people thought that maybe Kali Meeham didn't win that particular fight um, against Hunter Sam, but Hunter Sam did a very good job. So he's not like someone to rest up against. So Kiki has been going through a good test, say, so he fought. Julius Long it <laughs> didn't do too well in that fight. Yeah. I thought Julius Long won. Eh, Julius Long. Julius Long. <laughs> I thought Julius Long won that fight. To be yeah. So it was a draw, was it? It ended up in a draw, but like okay. I but didn't he put him down like twice. Couple, twice. Wow. Yeah. So how the I see it is that Julius won the first round, but like the judges on the night did not see the same as what I saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kiki won like the uh, um won all the rest of the rounds apart from the last two rounds, uh, which. Uh, Julius won uh, those two rounds because he knocked down Kiki twice. Oh, well, one on each one. Was he stunned? Like, was he? Oh yeah, he was stunned. Like Kiki was. So stunned. he took the full eight count. Like he. T- yeah, yeah. Like it was a proper like, you know, if there was one more round, he would have been gone. So did he recover and and trouble Julia, Ju- uh, Julius at any stage? Oh, uh, well, Julius' plan was to tire Kiki. Uh, until those last two rounds Mm -hmm. because I know this because I was actually at uh, Dan Hennessy's house hanging out with Julius and Dan Hennessy a couple beers um, getting the insider information and hanging out with Inga um, Toy Gamala who's a former All Black Wow! Yeah, so it's a big party over there. Okay. Yeah. All with the with the celebrities. I'm a celebrity. Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm laughing because like. Uh, Inga was actually telling me the story about. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I should. Are you actually... allowed to? <laughs> oh no! I, I, 
I'll leave home to say next next time you, <laughs> anyone sees us. Oh, there's like apparently you went to a, a school and like you're talking about nicknames. So next time you see Inga, ask him that story. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it just, um, anyway, um, Hunter Sam, he's uh, fought uh, David Light as well. And David, I think, knocked him out as well. So, okay. So, so he didn't trouble David, but he's troubled a lot of our, our top Kiwi fighters. Yes, so yeah. Hunter Sam, will gi- I think, will give Kiki trouble. Yeah, that's yeah. A, no, it's a good test. It's a good experience for um, Kiki. So if he can beat him, you yeah. know, he got far to go. And, you know... To be honest, I thought like there should be a rematch against Julius Long in the. Why is that not happening? Though? I don't know. The, I, it wouldn't be surprised if they they don't feel like they're ready to fight Julius Long again. But that should be a ten round fight for a New Zealand title. Okay. How how long? That was four rounds, wasn't it? That was five rounds. Five rounds. Okay. Yeah. But I, do you think that that sh- that should be in for a New Zealand title rematch? You know, against you know Kiki versus Julius. I don't know, but I would love to see it. Yeah, yeah. Really. Regardless of a title or anything, I think there should be a rematch. I mean, yeah. he has to redeem himself. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. both boxers do. Yeah, because even Izu struggle with Julius. Like Julius can give anyone problems. Well, the yeah. guy's the tallest fighter in the world. Julius can um, make you look like shit. Yeah, he's put down the Klitschko brothers. Yeah, like inspiring or. Yeah, in fact, so, yeah. he made Hemi look like shit. Yeah, but Hemi won the fight, but he yeah, looked yeah, like yeah. shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's um, a, yeah. And plus, you know, Julius is smiling through the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Like showboating. Like, it's. I love seeing him in the ring. So. He, he was actually talking on Facebook about how he wanted the rematch, but they didn't want it, so. Okay. Well, it makes sense, you know? Maybe he's not ready yet. Well, um, and uh, another. There's a lot more car, um, fights on the card, but another one to. This is a long mention. show, eh? <laughs> oh, it's a long show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is uh, Joshua Francis uh, okay. fighting the. Chucky. Yeah, uh, fighting the Fijian boxer. Got the Fijian boxer's name. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll appear. A big yeah. blue box. Boom. Right here. <laughs> um, good test for Josh. Um, when I first saw Josh, honestly, just completely yeah, go. I didn't see much in Josh. Oh. I mean, like, he got knocked down by Nigel Elliott, which is, again, nothing against Nigel Elliott, but <laughs> like, you know, he got knocked down by Nigel Elliott. There wasn't a lot of success <laughs> there. He had trouble against Alistair Boyd, you know. I didn't see a lot of things in Josh. But um, what changed is, is this fight against um, this. I was judging this uh, one of Josh's fight, and I saw I started seeing a lot of improvements. Like, and I saw in that last fight against Alistair Boyd as well that that he did very well in. So um, I think what uh, Shane's done with Josh is actually a lot of good things, and I can see a lot of improvements. And I think he can actually go far now. Mm-hmm. But I. St- you know, uh, he still needs to work on his defense. That's his biggest problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I know. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but I know that this fight was supposed against supposed to be against Lance Bryant. Originally, Chucky versus Lance Bryant. Yeah. Wow. But Lance Bryant pulled out because huh. of injury. That would be a good show, and this is on Sky TV, right? Yeah, Sky TV. Wow. For the New Zealand title, I think as well. Okay. But you know. <laughs> oh well. All right. Next topic is we've got the. Indian versus Pakistan. I didn't know night. Andre was uh, Indian. <laughs> <laughs> or is he Pakistani? Which one is he? None of them. Mikhailovich. But, but, but yeah, the Indian versus Pakistan boxing event that has um, Bruce Glossier um, and uh, Indian promoter. Uh, and I think John Glossier is helping matchmaking some of it as well. Um, it's mostly um, Indian versus Pakistan, but there's also um, Andre Mikhailovich fighting a boxer um, from I think it's also from India so I'm not entirely sure originally um, I wasn't entirely sure about this fight night I think it's very random to have this sort of fight night in New Zealand Mm -hmm, exactly but but like I don't know um, how about you like like, what Uh, do you think I mean, look, these the cricket games between India and Pakistan are quite contentious like you know there's there's quite a beef between the two countries yeah Uh, maybe it's, it's maybe it's great maybe it's actually the perfect event yeah. If you want to settle your differences, settle it in the ring. Yeah. Uh, I, I I don't know, but I think the atmosphere is going to be off the chain for this one. Do, did you want to see like the whole fight night? Because like um yeah, actually I do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know uh, there's a big Indian community community in New Zealand, so mm-hmm. uh, there's a bit of a Pakistan th- a community here, but I think there's more Indian community here. Um, uh, so uh, it'd probably be a good fight night for the Indian community. Yeah. So. But uh, don't get me wrong. Like even though the countries have like beef, but people like some of the Indians' best friends, they're all friends. Like yeah. Pakistanis and Indians, they all get along. 
It's just the two country leaders that don't get along. So, okay. yeah, so I don't know. I would love to see it. Yeah, Andre, I think it's a good um, idea. Andre just actually was in China over this weekend. He was in, in wow. an exhibition bout, so oh. no, no one wins. But apparently he was having an exhibition against one well, of China's um, champions. And? Um, and apparently he did very well. And the Chinese champion was 10 kgs over... Um, Andre, and yet Andre was still doing very well. Wow. Okay, yeah. so he's traveling the globe now. Yeah, well, he, he's good. You know? Okay. No, that's good. That's good. Good experience for him. Yeah. Oh, and here we go. We've got, like, the card here. Um, Andre versus Siddharth Varma. You got the card on front. Yeah, yeah. You want to say some of these? <laughs> uh, Siddharth Ravindra Varma? Hey, look, I'm not this good, that good either. Uh, okay. Let's see. Oh, Andre Singh, okay. he's from, uh, in, uh, from Fiji, coming over here for that fight night. Okay, is Ted Pratap Singh in here? No. <laughs> Ted Pratap Singh. Yeah, you know. You know, it would be good to have a uh, Tesh Singh. Yeah, sorry. That's what I meant. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that that would have been good. Uh, a couple of female fighters on the card as well, so that's good to have. Um, yeah. Apparently, uh, there's this region called Haryana in India, mm -hmm. and that's where like the best fighters are from. So. Oh. That's where Ted is from. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, he kept on... Like, when I interviewed him, he was saying, yeah, I'm from Haryana. I was like, so what's that? <laughs> like, That's where the best... Hey, what is yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> That's where the best of the best. So it'll be interesting to see whether any of them are from Haryana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, see, we're coming through this now. We're wait, wait, so when's that show? When, what, uh, what? Uh, same night as um, the Shane Cameron show. It's the 29th oh, okay. of November, happening at the old Langham Hotel. Now it's called Cordis Hotel, the ballroom. Two boxing events on the same night, huh? Yeah, only one of them is televised, though. Okay, yeah. Dun, okay. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which one could it be? Dun, dun. Oh, Shane Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> Shane Cameron has a good relationship <laughs> with Sky. Yes, yeah, yes. So each one of his shows is now... Locked in on Sky. Pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, let's, let's be honest. He had, he did have a little bit of a dry run where he had a couple of shows that weren't as entertaining as they could be. But that's mm -hmm. because most uh, boxers kept on pulling out. Yeah. And <gasps> as you know, the pull out method does not work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he, he puts on, um, you know, he has that name recognition and people yeah. tune in. So. Yeah, yeah. Do you think uh, Bruce Glossier is now getting the same sort of? Yes, I think so, because Bruce, um, he's starting to develop a relationship with Sky, especially with Giovanna as his kind of main person. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that um, the Indian versus Pakistan event will be televised, but like um, he'll start to develop that um, relationship. <gasps> but I think Craig Thompson would be a better person to have that uh, relationship with Sky <gasps> because he does produce quite a lot of good That's true nights. actually that's interesting I, I would like to ask him when he if he's here about his relationship with Sky <gasps> Hey hey, Craig yeah. Craig <laughs> <laughs> Damn it you skinny bastard <laughs> <laughs> Alright next topic he's in Boxing... shape <laughs> Get in shape <laughs> Boxing Mania 8 we have Tanya Reed that's going all the way over to Australia on the 23rd, 23rd of November to fight Rachel Loder for the Australasian title. Who? Who? Which part? Tanya? Who is Tanya Reed? So yeah. Tanya Reed, she's... Is she from New Plymouth? No. Yes, oh, you're Okay, correct. okay, I know. Okay. Tanya Reed, she's had one win, two losses, one draw in her professional career she is a five-time silver medalist at the New Zealand Golden Globe oh, Golden Globes Golden Gloves she's a four-time silver medalist at the amateur nationals uh former amateur um Manawatu champion and former Wanganui champion okay so she's okay so she's been around <gasps> she's been around in the amateurs she's, <gasps> she's kind of like just beginning in the pros thing with her is is that she needs to work on being a pro um if you know what i mean she keeps on um her tactics three amateur base and that's been her biggest problem when she's actually fighting because she's you know she needs to develop more combinations in her boxing instead of tap tap taps you know because um back in the day um amateurs i'm not entirely sure 100 percent because i'm not an amateur judge but um i think amateur was about how many punches you landed instead of the effective eff effectiveness and stuff Go like on. that so she, i think she's still in her old amateur ways and that's her biggest problem mm -hmm. um but she's going over to australia to fight for the australasian title we've spoken about the australasian title in our last uh, show and we talked about how um, title ching ching <laughs> Title, 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 <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Um, <laughs> um, and we talk about the history about the Australasian title. So it's actually a, a very historic title. We haven't had a title in New Zealand, literally in New Zealand, quite a while. 
She's actually really popular in New, in New Plymouth. I'm pretty sure I saw her fight at Sam Rapira's, uh the explosion events, the Taranaki explosion. Yeah, so... The Massive in- fan base. Like, uh, it's interesting because Sam Rapira he sells, sells out his events. Um, I judged her consistently, fight... Consistently, yeah. Yeah, I judged her fight against Baby Nansen. You know how many people were there? You're talking about uh, Tanya Reed yeah, versus... Baby Nansen. Oh, wow. So wait, you got to tell us what how, how did it go? So Baby won the fight. And By... Na- easily uh, unanimous decision. Okay, okay. But, like, you know how many people were in the audience? How many? 3,542. Yeah, those are the Las Vegas... It's the biggest boxing event. 3,000 people, yeah. yeah. 3,000 people. I've been to a couple of these shows, and it is... It's yeah. massive. Yeah. It's massive. You, yeah. you won't be able to see that much happening in New Zealand. And um, it's funny, I was talking to Daniela Smith, and she thinks she could do the same thing in one uh, Whangarei. Yeah, because, uh, because people out there don't get boxing events, so, you well, know. Well, it's not just that, but, like, Danielle Smith, she's, a like, a celebrity in Whangarei. Is she? Okay. Yeah, same <laughs> repair, she's a celebrity. He's a celebrity in New Plymouth. Mm-hmm. Like, even the weigh-ins are packed. Yeah, I meant yeah. to record the weigh-in. Packed. Yeah, yeah. So, um, They're yeah. very well known in those regional areas. Mm-hmm. Um, Gis- um, Gisborne is very popular for Shane Cameron, but Shane Cameron is like everywhere. So, mm-hmm. um, Bowen Morgan, he's popular in Christchurch, obviously. Like Bochamp, so. It's good that, you know, they have the local support, right? So, yeah, you know, that's, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. It's, not, it's too bad that we can't do something similar in Auckland, though, because mm-hmm. we don't have that much of a, like, such a strong support for one person. That is... Okay, so you mean it's quite, like, uh, quite diverse. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we've got um, so many... I think like we're starting to see that with Giovanna now, but that's because of <laughs> um, no, uh, that's because of a lot of work that's happening between you know G- myself, Terry, Giovanna, and Bruce. So, plus uh, I was going to mention the White Cat Warrior. Oh, we'll, we'll be doing yeah. that later. Yeah, yeah, who's popular as well. He's yeah. got that oh, oh, yeah. he's fan ve- base. Yeah, he's very popular in Waikato. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's, David. He's, he's famous in... Nikia? Um, yeah, well, no, David Nika's famous nationally. I'm talking yeah, about, true, like, true, yeah. these boxers who are famous in their hometowns. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, oh, here we go. We've done uh, Tanya Reid. Um, that's uh, good, that's good. Yep. Gone she uh, won against uh, Wendy Talbot, who's also uh, fought for Monica Tai. Where is Monica Tai these days, anyway? You know, sure. Um, uh, yeah, you're talking about uh, Ty's Monica Ty's sister, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. H- haven't seen her for a while. Yeah. Um, so yeah, first fight was against uh, Wendy Talbot. Uh, went on to f- um, had a draw with Juanita Haiti from up north in Northland. So those are the learning fights, you know. Yeah, yeah. and then lost to Juanita uh, oh, for the no. New Zealand title. Uh, good on Juanita, and then lost to Baby Nansen. And oh, now, so no. a big. This is a big step up. Um, as well, I mean, like Baby Nancy was a big fight, mm-hmm. but this is another big fight because Rachel Lodder um, is a five and zero undefeated wow. fight. So. Okay, that's a good record. But imagine Rachel versus Baby one day. You know, they've already fought though. Oh, you're sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Rachel. Oh yeah. yeah, there you go. That's a good fight. Yeah. So uh, looking at Rachel's uh, undefeated record, um, has actually defeated Quinita okay, as well. Okay, so they got uh, opponents in common. Uh, yeah, has has one point Quanita, um, but Quanita has drawn and and defeated Tanya. So, Quanita, tell me what's wrong. No. <laughs> Sorry. All right, let's go on. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Joseph Parker. Okay. Uh, so often I talk about Joseph yeah. Parker. It's like we always talk about local fighters, mm-hmm. not New Zealanders that go overseas. Um, so Joseph Parker, he's uh, confirmed that he was going to practically be out for the rest of the year. Um, they c- won't be able to find a uh, vent to be on because, of course, he's exclusive to Eddie Hearns at the moment. Um, he's going, and because of his spider bite, um, he's only just managed to start working out now. But it seems that he will be com- returning back in New Zealand in a couple of weeks. Okay, yeah. Um, I think I, I saw on his Twitter feed that he was trying to get on the undercard for Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz, but it, it was, was chock a block. Yeah, chock a block. Yeah. No, no fit. Yeah. yeah. Um, that would have been pretty good, right? That yeah, would, yeah. It, it, it's just you it's know, just too quick. It's a twi- it's it's very soon, right? Just around the corner, anyway. So yeah, it's December, something like that. Yeah, it's like December is just like a month away. Mm-hmm. You know? and do you think? Because uh, I I saw Dar- um, David Price get smashed. So do you think maybe? I don't know. You, you, I mean, Joseph Park would obviously have done better than than Price, right? Yes, but well, it's interesting because it's about styles. 
David Price would be an interesting fight for Joseph Parker one day because massive height difference between the two. A lot of people online are probably going, oh, no, what the fuck is that for? Uh, yep. What's the point? But no, that that would be an interesting fight, just as the idea of it. Mm-hmm. Um, probably don't need to do it though, but like, you know. Um, so he's taking the, the, the rest of the year off. So yep. That's, but yeah. Again, that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, he only had one fight this year, correctly though. Yeah, which is his probably his least active year as a pro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, uh, I think in this, in a way, I think it's a good thing because I thought Chisora would have won that fight. Just just judging by mentality over that, you know. But wanted by how? What? Like wanted by? I think Chisora. Oh, how? Yeah. I don't know to be honest. Okay. I don't know if it'll be knockout or decision. Because Parker has a chin, man. He's got yeah. a chin. But like you know, I just I just feel like mentally, Chisora had the like was had the edge. Yeah, it. just to, just to me, I think Chisora just appears a little more hungrier. Like yeah. he just seems like he loves it. He wants to eat all the pies. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like he. But Andy Ruiz already got it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's talk about um, Cairo just a little bit. Uh, so obviously Cairo just uh, had his fight against uh, James Hilt. Was it James Hilt? Or yeah, Jamie? James Hilt. Yeah. So um, Jamie Hilt. Jamie Hilt. I've never seen Cairo look like this before. God damn. That's that is a big cut. Damn. So I do know I wasn't able to watch the fight, but I know from people who were there that in the first round he actually got the cut in the first round by an elbow. Um, the cut eventually got worse in the ninth round by accidental headbutt, and because of that, it had to be stopped. And due to that, um, uh, due to that, uh, it went to the judges' scorecards, and Jamie Hilt uh, won by technical decision. Um, there's been a couple of people that say, oh, rematch, um, but that was actually Jamie Hilt's um, retirement, fight. retirement fight. And to be honest, I don't think there was a uh, rematch needed because from what I was told, I wasn't there, so I don't know, but what I was told, Jamie won every round but one round. So, um, so you know, if that was the case, we'll see when the score cuts in, but if that was the case, there's, there's no need for a rematch. I was desperately trying to find a, a live stream for that fight, yeah. but... Um, couldn't find one. Yeah. I really did want Cairo to like succeed. He kind of does deserve it. He's been around for a while. He's uh, he actually fought in the amateurs as well, but uh, he had a motorcycle am- uh, accident in the, while he was doing amateur boxing. Who had the Cairo? Really? This was years, years, years ago. Okay. But, How bad was it? Uh, well, enough for surgery, I think. Wow. Okay. But then he made a return. He started building up his pro career. Had a couple of New Zealand titles. Fought North Bow Champ. Won his regional title. Broke his hand. Had a bit of a break. Won, uh, defended his regional title. Broke his hand again. Had mm-hmm. a break. And then went off to Singapore. Lost against Steve Fernandez, which is his second biggest test of his career. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then you know. Uh, lost against Jamie Hilt after you know these it's unfortunate because like Cairo he's had only three massive fights because the other fights I you know that's you know they're fights but they're know, building they're they're building up his you know yeah yeah um, not Bochamp was his biggest win, but mm-hmm. there's other two uh, f- uh, massive fights he lost. So it's unfortunate. I really do want him to succeed, but mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, because I was I was trying to find some footage, and I just found this this clip of the last round on uh, TGW and Smithy's Promotions Facebook page. Yeah. But that's all I could find. I hope they release the full footage. Uh, I would I'd love to just watch that and just yeah. study clearly who's got the edge, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next topic. Um, we're going on to. International boxing. Oh, gasp! It's supposed to be New Zealand boxing. Well, this has got something to do with New Zealand boxing. Clarissa Shields moves to MMA. Now, why has this got to do with New Zealand boxing? So, here we, we go. The biggest thing is, is that this is exciting. <laughs> Giovanna Perez and Lani Daniels. It's their massive biggest mission to one day fight um, Clarissa Shields. Mm-hmm. Um, now the interesting fa- thing is, is that Lani Daniels and Giovanna they were at like heavyweights for most of their career. Um, Lani is slowly moving down, uh, down in weights, and Giovanna is light heavyweight world champion. So for Clarissa, she wanted he, she's been moving down in weights herself. She's managed to reach 69 kgs, which isn't what Lani or Giovanna. Was going to have uh, was going to fight in. So regardless, that these fights were probably less likely to happen anyway. 
Um, the biggest thing on top of this is, is that um, these fights are even more, oh, even less likely to happen because Clarissa Shields is moving to MMA. What do you mean, like permanently? Apparently. See, her, no. first, <clears throat> her first MMA fight's going to happen next year. Um, going to take a lot of time to actually, you know, prepare for that. Um, but yeah, she's moving out. But at the same time, Clarissa is in big trouble at the moment because her, what was it, posse or what What do you call her entourage yeah. caused that fight um, against her opponent's um, trainer. And, um, I think like broke a jaw or something, needed surgery and whatnot. So she was in big trouble anyway from boxing. So it might actually be a good move for Clarissa to move to MMA just because of all that drama. Ooh. And Clarissa, she does bring a lot of drama as well because she talks a lot on Facebook and social media, as she has against <laughs> Giovanna and Lani as well on Instagram. Um, yeah, didn't she mention Giovanna Perez in a, in a tweet? Like, um... oh, and, no, she mentioned both Giovanna and... Um... Yeah, did you mention that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, um, because yeah. I think someone had shared the clip with uh, yeah. with Clarissa it's, saying, it's, yeah. It's hilarious that um, how much shit that Clarissa put on Instagram just to go negative, 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 negative. Ah, oh, these girls are crap. Like, you know. Wait, wait, I'm confused. I- I'm referring to the clip where someone sent a footage of Isaac Savage interviewing Giovanna Perez after a win. And then she had said that, you know, Clarissa is my, um, is my idol. I would love to fight her one day. Yeah. Yeah, and then she said, um, I think Clarissa responded saying, yeah, something like, um, do you know, remember the response? No, but like, there's been like, well, um, she had, uh, when these, when Giovanna and Lani were about to fight for a world title, mm-hmm. um, someone sent a message about that, how these two girls wanted to fight her. And then her response, oh, ah, no, fuck these girls. <laughs> no, nah, but the latest response, the, the, then, the and then response, afterwards, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing about that is, is afterwards her team representatives kind of tried to do damage control, and it's like, oh no, um, these girls, uh, they're making good for boxing, blah 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 blah, kind of trying to hide the fact of what Clarissa Shields uh, trying to say. But what I'll do is I'll try find that. Yeah, because she said she said I hope she's serious. Yeah, and she would like the challenge. Like, well, uh, yeah, well. Um, Which is positive. Yeah, but I think that came from the team, not from Clarissa. Ah, it doesn't matter. It yeah. came from her Twitter account. <laughs> you gotta take it like, you know. No, it wasn't her Twitter. I don't think she said that, though. It we'll, was. We'll, we'll look up and yeah, like, yeah, put yeah. it on there. No, it was. No, it was not. <laughs> it was not. It was. <laughs> it was not. Okay, screenshots coming. I'm telling screenshots you. Screenshots coming up. Suppose she did. Would you be impressed? No. <laughs> Why not? Because she still um, ended up cracking some random guy's jaw on, on stage at a weigh-in. So she, that doesn't change my opinion. Was it her or was it a coach or something? Her, her coach, though. Okay, but, yeah. like, you know. Once um, again, it's not her. Yeah, but she's a uh, like she runs her mouth off like without But that's, that's what makes these fighters interesting, right? People that talk, talk a good game. And then you want to see them together, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, next topic. Um, so we're going here with a little random topic here, not so random. Um, so Nort Bochamp has just announced on his Facebook page after him, him getting married, he's going off congrats. to what? Oh, I was just saying, congrats, no? Yeah, congrats to Nort Bochamp. Um, unfortunately, he's married. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, congrats. No. Um, he's going off to America to train with the City Kickboxing crew um, alongside um, Hemia Hio and Junior Far, um, and then um, going to be at Salt Lake City when Junior Far and Hemia Hio are fighting. It's interesting because is this a possibility, the real reason why he's going over there is to try sign up with a promoter alongside um, City Kickboxing Gym, um, as Junior Far and Hemia Hio does. Had that with, I think, what's his name? I don't know. Lou Bella? Yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe he's trying to get that um, signed deal with for Nort, Nort Boat Champ. Possibly. That's strate- and, strate- strate- strategic. Yeah. And another thing is, is that, is there a possibility he's going to be on that card? Wow. Yeah. 
Okay, that's good. That's good. At least he's uh, you know he's thinking thinking of some good opportunities and trying yeah. to trying to use it. So that's good. But this uh, card is not just like this, they say Toko taking over when they say Toko, like Tongans taking over. Um, it's going to be Junior Fars on the card in Salt Lake City. They've got. Um, Hemia Heroes on the card, and they've got Patrick Mal- Maliata. Wow. The Kiwis on the are card. taking over. The New Zealanders are taking over. That's awesome. Yeah, and he can see the card already, but um, Patrick's uh, uh, opponent's not um, being announced yet, but he's on the card. Junior Fire's fighting Devin Vargas, who's ranked 107 in the world, so it's actually a good step up for him anyway. I'm pretty sure I've heard that name before. And Hemia Heo is fighting Joshua Tuft. So cool. Devin has a pretty good record, so... Yeah, they both 21 do. wins, 5 losses, okay. I wonder if he's going to defend his title. And Hemi's going for a 10-round fight as well. Wow, okay. How cool would it be if all the Kiwis on their card get the win? Yeah, and if not, Bochamp ends up getting yeah. the fight. So that's 4 Kiwis. Wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah. And yeah, so that that's it for today. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Who said it was that difficult, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, that's it. Uh, you know. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween. Trick yeah. or treat. You know, <laughs> here's some candy for you. And we'll, s- so we might do one next week. Hopefully we do, fingers crossed. Mm-hmm. And then we'll have a two-week break because, damn it, Josh! What Producer can I say? Josh. What can I say? Yeah. So upset. Okay, we'll see you later, Craig Thompson. So yeah, hopefully we'll see you next week. Boom. That's a wrap.